Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? Oh. In the state of mind. Yeah, we're going to have exchanges. We're going to have to go to the We're going to have to go to the Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to the Vanguard. For Muhammad, I actually showed up on time today. Shaker, I am Matt. I was not ready. You say that every day now. Not every I've day. I've been showing up on time not every quite day. often. No. Just no. everybody now. He, he, timely person. he is definitely not a timely person. Do not let him lie to you about that. <laughs> I am Matt. I was actually the one running late today, right? See, I was going to insult myself, and you had to go and ruin my joke. I knew you were going to do that. And together we are traversing the muddied waters of freedom. Welcome. Welcome. First and foremost, let us thank Low Tide Calaba for the Cava and Kratom. We are going to be drinking on this. And made coffee from St. Petersburg, Florida. Because he needs that to wake up. I do. 
Было. Было. Uh, happy cultural appropriation, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, uh, we already had St. Patrick's Day. Right, this is a different cultural appropriation. Yeah. Cinco de Cuatro. Cinco de Cuatro. <laughs> hey, I haven't heard somebody hey, say that. Hey, what, what, what do you call, what do you call for Mexican men in a boat that's drowning? I don't know. Cuatro. Did you know that Cinco de Mayo is not Mexican Independence Day? No, I read that. It was just some county that had a battle. No, actually, okay, so this is actually quite interesting. The city of Pueblo or some shit. So many years ago, mm -hmm. many, many years ago, uh, a boat was coming from Europe. Yeah. And it was going to stop off in New York, and then after New York, it was going to to be going down to Mexico. And on the way, it sank mm -hmm. on the 5th of May. And the boat was carrying a bunch of mayonnaise. And we all know that Mexicans love to put mayonnaise on like, yeah. their street corn. Mm -hmm. So that is why they call today Cinco de Mayo. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's <laughs> awesome. Holy shit. <laughs> Teach that one. That's 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 good. Yeah. That's good. Old Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> the Mayo Sanco. Yeah. I thought you were going to say something over the I was excited. No, I wasn't. I was uh, like, oh my God. <laughs> no. Eight years later, the Prussians handed the French another defeat in Europe. Damn it, French. Why must it? It's gotta suck to be French. It's gotta Always suck. Always being made fun of. Oh. Even though, like, you know, actually everybody, you know, the French really honestly have won as many battles as anybody else and lost as many as anybody else. They're not actually... I think they're really known for their losses only because of most recently they've had a lot of losses. But throughout history as a French people... They've had a, as many uh, victories and maybe even more than average, I'd say, than a lot of other people. It's just like recent history, you know, like them running away from Vietnam, them getting, getting defeated in Mexico, Cuba, Puerto Rico, you know, just all over the place. The, you know, the freaking uh, uh, Africa, all over Africa getting, getting kicked out and all that. But they're actually, uh, the French military is actually, a or used to be one of the strongest armies before Napoleon and after Napoleon. They had one of the strongest navies even. I mean, strong enough to contend with the British. So people do give them too, too much shit, you know. <laughs> but it's not that bad. Do they, you, though? They do, man. Do they? Yeah. I mean, I'm a history buff, so yes. I, I I'm going to answer honestly. <laughs> <laughs> they do. But I don't like the French anyway. They were really horrible colonizers. And uh, I'm glad Egypt was not... Well, they tried attacking Egypt. Napoleon did and failed. So, fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck that guy. We just went from a PG rating to an R rating in two seconds. Yeah, we're always R rated. Right? I know. Anyway, you got a new car. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I can start working. Congratulations. Thank you. You can do the job of your peoples. Yep. Yeah, stereotypical. Uh, my Bumble now says stereotypical driver at Uber Lyft. <laughs> that doesn't get me a date. I don't know what will. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, congratulations, though. That's awesome. Thank you. And I saw your last car. What I would recommend if you're going to be driving. The last car is so, like, that's a, dude, that car I've had for nine years now. I, I'm not knocking the car itself. Mm -hmm. I'm knocking the interior of the car yeah, itself. Yeah, I haven't treated it well. <laughs> right. But, I, I mean, I gotta say, man, over nine years, spending at least six or seven months living out of the car when I was in Alabama and Mississippi. I get it. You know, and then... Uh, my problem with that too is like the weather stripping went out from the top, 
Um, but that car's done well for me. And I've babied the shit out of it. I don't like abusing my car. Right. Um, like, a lot of people abuse the shit out of their cars. I prefer to treat my car with respect because it's a car, man. It's made to go from A to B, especially if it's a four-cylinder. There's no reason to overwork that engine. It's made to be economical. I'll, I'll, you know, that's what motorcycles for me are for. I'm not a car guy. I'm more of a bike guy. You probably know that. You just, you've never seen my bikes. I've never now. seen your bikes. Yeah, I'm a big bike guy, but... Uh, you know, the the engine's really good, man. It's an 07, has 103,000 miles, which, and half of that is highway miles. So the engine's really good. Um, and I haven't had many problems with it, so whoever gets it is going to like it. They're probably just not going to like the interior or, right. or the exterior that much. But honestly, for the year and what's on it, it's a fucking good car. Right. No, I mean, again, wasn't knocking the car itself. Yeah. <laughs> was only knocking the way it looked on no, the inside. No, I agree, dude. No, I agree. Yeah, uh, I'm up to that. Yeah. So, I don't... Okay. Something huge happened this week. And I don't know if you saw it. I don't know. I already know you didn't see it. Because you already told me that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, something huge happened this week. Quite possibly, the greatest cultural revolution to ever happen. Mm-hmm. Cobra Kai was released. Yeah. On YouTube Red. And I watched all 10 episodes in one day mm-hmm. because I was, I got up one day and I was How long like, are they? Half an hour. Half an hour. I got up and I was like, I'm going to watch this show. Just, you know, see a couple episodes, see if I get yeah. into it. And, and I, then you did. And I got into it. Yeah. And for those of you who do not know, Cobra Kai is not G.I. Joe, Muhammad. Yeah, I thought, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Cobra Kai is... It's essentially Karate Kid 4. Yeah. And it is awesome. It is awesome. Sean Simpson, owner of Low Tide Travel Bar, who we get our travel from yeah. each and every week, <laughs> texted me literally as the show was starting and it said, fuck, I want more. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it is, as he also says, so good. Yeah. <laughs> TJ, our buddy TJ, uh, texted me when he finished it, and he goes, Cobra Kai was great. Pretty badass series. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody has the same feeling at the end. They're like, when is season two happening? Mm-hmm. But if you haven't seen Karate Kid... If you haven't seen Karate Kid, you need to watch that. Otherwise, you're not going to understand it. Well, you'll be able to catch up. It's not really all that difficult. It yeah, is- I've been interested in seeing what what YouTube Red ends up doing because I feel like they could uh, skyrocket. Like, not skyrocket, but I, I feel like they're going to be able to put out some quality shows um, for, for what that platform is. I think they'll be able to monetize some really cool stuff yes you know there's this one show that i really wanted to watch that's about like time travel uh, people, some, a few people like it so like time travel police sort of thing doctor who no it's it's a it's a different kind of time travel no it's a time travel police not not doctor who <laughs> i wouldn't call him like a police police he uses a police box i know yeah no but these are like uh it's like a company that, like, oh, 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 it's an insurance company, I think. Yeah, it's an insurance company that uh, tracks time or something like that. And when somebody's about to die or something, they show up to save them. It's pretty interesting. It's not, it's, it's, it's a, for a YouTube red show, it's really good, you know. So I'm just waiting to see how, how much more they get out of more people subscribing to YouTube red and all, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But anyway, go watch Cobra Kai, especially if you've seen The Karate Kids. It's fantastic. And I'm not going to lie, I wasn't sure who I was rooting for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't decide. I, I felt for both characters. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I, I mean, I've, I, I like the movies I've just never watched. I never got too into them. But that's cool that people are liking it. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. It is amazing and cool. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of karate, 
Is there something that goes wrong with that? <laughs> I was like, wow, that... Speaking of karate, did you hear that China <laughs> is no longer buying soybeans from us? Oh, you can <laughs> Does that come from China? I have no idea. I think I thought Taekwondo is what comes I from China. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was what you gave me. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, China is apparently not going to be buying any more soybeans from us, and that's because of the uh, non-stop uh, trade wars that um, nothing happened because of our great, great. Well, okay, I, I don't mean to be too sarcastic because I'm, I'm starting to... God, he, he this guy makes me bipolar. Like, I really like him and then I really hate him. I know. He, Trump, you know? He goes back, <laughs> he goes back and forth Yeah, because so well, just like two weeks ago, I was like really shitting on him. And I know. I'm just like, oh, I really like him. <laughs> See, okay, but before I'm going to go out there on the limb and being like, yeah, no, Nobel Peace Prize, let's do it. Yeah. There, there, there's the wild card. There's John Bolton. Oh no, yeah, yeah. And and, and Johnny Harelip Bolton, he, uh, I think he may try to mess well, up that deal. Somebody told me that Trump hired John Bolton on because of who he is to scare people, the other countries that he's trying to do things with. Um. I could see it, like, hey, I just hired John Bolton as my national security advisor, and then countries that the United States uh, is having foreign policy issues with might be more on guard because Bolton is a bomb them, bomb them, bomb them guy, and they might just give in to what Trump wants. Bolton I could see that. Bolton doesn't want to bomb everybody. <laughs> what does he want to do? I don't know. That's what he said. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's... I could see it, you know. I, I can, I, I can kind of see that because, like, Trump, eh, Trump doesn't easily give in to every single person ever under his staff, and he typically hires really good people that have made good things for him, like especially Mattis. Um, but wait, well, let me just talk about that real quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so China's not going to buy from the soybeans from the U.S. anymore. Um, that that was from the CEO of New York-based Bunge. You know, it's the world's largest oil seeds processor, which I did not know what that was. I um, also didn't know that soybeans and all these kind of beans were sold in tens of thousands of metric tons to just one country. I was like, crap, that's, that's, a, lot of, that's a lot of seeds. That's a lot <laughs> of seeds. Um, but yeah, so it's... Uh, that's... It, the article on C CNBC doesn't list, like, what kind of a trade deficit that's going to end up making. Um, but they're not buying from us because of the trade war. So that is one strike definitely against Trump, as always, when it comes to the whole trade war thing. Right. Um, of course, there is always Burlington, Vermont, who goes through more soy than anywhere else in the world. Oh really? I have no idea. If that's well, true. wait. Maybe soy soybean soybean prices might actually drop within this country if they don't sell that to somebody else that picks up. Although I mean, China's the largest country in the world. I don't know who would buy right. I was gonna that say, much. So I was going to say there's no way. Yeah. So I mean, I would say that maybe soybean prices will drop within this country. So we'll see the we'll see what that ends up doing over the next you know couple of years because we're not going to see that anytime soon. Maybe within the next year or two, but it'll take a, it'll take a while for the markets to realize what's going on, and for there to just be too much soybean to do anything with. So they're gonna have to drop prices. Um, I don't know what soybean is used for other than the very typical stuff that I can think of. Other, you know, like making milk. making food I'll never eat. Oh, okay. Oh, soy based food is that like what vegans? I guess yes. have a lot. Of, okay. Also, vegan food and vegetarian food might go down in prices, so that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, good. Yeah. And if they stay not buying anything, it might even it might become cheap enough to spur more vegan and vegetarian stores, which I think that would be a pretty cool thing, even though I'm not really vegan or vegetarian. But, you know, that's more competition. It might make vegan vegetarian food a lot cheaper 
than it is right now. You know, maybe more people might end up going vegan or vegetarian over it. I've had soy-based foods at a vegan restaurant here in downtown. Judah, Judah? I think it was Judah and Levi. Uh, right. They're owners of a kava bar here called, called Matt Hatter's. Yeah, they took me, the, I went and had like a dinner with them and somebody else uh, two years ago or something. I can I can eat vegan food if I ha- you know if it's offered. It's not yeah. that bad. You just got to be. I guess you just have to be ready for it or want to. I was gonna say know? if my option was vegan food or no food or no food. Yeah. yeah, I could eat vegan food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. We'll we'll see what this ends up doing. But I still think it's yeah. It might end up helping within this country. But I mean, that still shows that China is responding negatively to the trade war that's going on. Oh, that's right. So personally when China was on WWE I really liked it. And speaking of WWE though, <laughs> did you hear about uh Kane? I did hear about Kane. <laughs> <laughs> old old Glenn Jacobs Kane yeah. is now the Republican primary winner. Yeah. In Knox County. In Knox County. Which is Knox, though. For the mayor. For the, yeah. For the mayoral Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we, we talked about it before the show. We have no idea. If somebody knows, feel free to tell us. I don't know if the mayor, I don't know if Knox County mayor is over the whole county or if Knoxville is the Knox County itself or what. Like, it's a little weird because here we have St. Petersburg mayor, not Pinellas County mayor. So I don't know if I don't know how big Knox County is and if it has any more uh, townships in it. I guess maybe it does, uh, but we have no idea. So feel free to tell us. But anyway, Kane, yeah, who is the half brother of the Undertaker? Yep. Uh, and they were in a tag team group called. Crap, I looked this up yesterday so I could talk about it. I used it. to remember, no, I used to remember, because Kane actually, I'm not, I'm not making it, I used to watch WWE when I was a kid, so, and Kane was one of my favorites, but I don't remember the tag team they were on. I can't remember either. Uh, I asked Randy, our friend Randy, about it, because uh-huh. he's really into wrestling, <laughs> and uh, I, I don't remember. But uh, Kane is a very intelligent guy, and he just won the... Uh, primary for the Republican Party for the mayor race, which pretty much all but means he's going to be the next mayor of Knox County. Yeah, it's it's the brotherhoods, the brothers of destruction. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> the brothers of destruction. So congratulations to Glenn Jacobs. Yeah, and and, and Glenn Jacobs, um, I I think he was, uh, I'm sure he was endorsed by Ron Paul. He was endorsed by Randy. And actually, quickly speaking about endorsements, uh, Bob White <coughs> from the Republican Liberty Caucus here in Florida, uh, he's been on our show last year because he's running for the governor of Florida, did get Ron Paul's endorsement, um, which is really cool. So that's, that's very pretty cool. pretty big name. I don't know how much that's going to help him. It'll probably help him a little bit, um, having his name being put out by Ron Paul like that. Um, but, I mean, regrettably... Uh, I'm not seeing his name in a lot of news things. They're not talking about him, which really makes me sad because Bob is a really good guy. Um, the cool thing is another person that's running also in this primary is another really good Republican. Not as good, but th- almost just as good. Uh, uh, he's a congressman, uh, Ron DeSantis, here in Florida. Right. So he's running too. And, it, you know, it just sucks that that's how they treat libertarians in the Republican Party. Florida's not the best place for libertarians, to be honest. Not libertarian party. Like, I'm talking libertarians in the Republican Party. It's not that uh, the best place here, you know. It, it, you'd have to be lucky to pull it off, in my opinion. Like, our state senator is a libertarian Republican, but it's probably like the only one. So, <laughs> Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're talking about endorsements. So we're talking about, you were still talking about Kenyon. Right. I was like, man, I would totally off of. Uh, anyway. But, yeah, so uh, Glenn Jacobs, great guy, very intelligent. Uh, yeah, speaks at YAL, Young Americans for Liberty. He does. 
Uh, he came out yesterday, and so a lot of companies have been leaving states like Tennessee, uh, not Tennessee, New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, New York and California and going to states like Tennessee for the tax break. Yep, yeah. Not, well, uh, sorry, oh, hold on, no, not the tax break, the lower taxes. The lower, well, it's a tax break for them. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that it's understood that he's not given tax breaks. Right. Cool. Yes. It's a tax break for them Definitely. because they aren't paying the New York and California yep. yeah. state taxes. So yeah. They're going to a state that doesn't have one. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, trying to entice them to come in? He's, so a, lot of, a lot most of the companies are going to Nashville. Okay. And he is trying to entice them to That's good. come to Knoxville. And That's good. that will be great for the area and great for business and great for jobs. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, good. That's good. Nice job, Glenn Jacobs. Congratulations on your victory in the primary. 17. 17 votes. Yeah, 17. Yeah, that was the difference. That is crazy. Yeah. But anyway, congratulations to Glenn Jacobs. And you know, man, speaking real quick, like I was watching my, my buddy Chris, Chris Calton that I met at the Mises Institute, Mises University two years ago. He does like a podcast for the Institute called uh, Controversial History. And he was talking about the Corwin Amendment that I know that I talked about on this show. Uh, do you remember what that is? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so he did a, he did a, a, I think it's like 20 to 30 minutes is how long the podcast is. So I actually listened to it um, and uh, the history behind it and all that. Um, but I, I don't know as much as I, I would like to on the Civil War, um, but uh, I did not know this. Um, well, I, I, I sort of did. Like my, my, my knowledge on the Civil War is lacking, and I want to learn more about it. But yeah, I didn't know Tennessee was one of the last few states to join. They, they had had a secession... Um, what do you call it? What did they call them? Conventions or something? Yeah. They had a secession convention, and then they voted not to secede until the rest of the other, until the rest of the South. That's all Virginia and Kentucky, I think. Those three, uh, maybe even one more state. Kentucky was more. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Well, it was Virginia, Tennessee, another state that I can't think of. Um that were like the last ones to secede and they i guess it was because they 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 knew that they couldn't stay neutral um with uh federal forces crossing into their country now or their state uh to to go down there and do whatever they're going to do and who god knows what they're going to end up doing to Tennessee while they're there right um and that's when they ended up uh seceding along with you know Virginia which also, I believe, was one of the states. There was like three or four states that, um, maybe even five of them, um, voted to not secede until the, by the brink of the war, did secede. I don't know about Virginia. No, no, Virginia definitely. Well, I promise. Because I'm pretty certain that's when the Virginia-West Virginia split happened. Well, yeah, yeah, but that was like an illegal thing that where they they sort of like cut it bit there there was like a pro uh staying in i guess part of virginia um pro remaining union that ended up that that allowed themselves the to, way you were yeah <laughs> so, so west virginia what seceded from virginia which is they're right in my opinion still it to go to the union um but um Oh, I'm still correct, though, because I'm still talking about Virginia, Virginia, not the West Virginia. But, yeah, it was just really interesting to, to, to read about. Go, go to the Mises Institute website, uh, Chris Calton, or just, you know, type in Mises Institute, Controversial History. It's a pretty cool podcast. Yeah, so that's about Tennessee. Can we move on? Uh, speaking of Tennessee, um, did you hear that uh, – uh, Iowa. I was going to say, I don't know which one you're going with after that. Speaking of Tennessee, Iowa. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do this. We're going we're gonna to segue into every single one of our items somehow. The, the most awkwardly way that we happen. possibly can. We're going to make it happen. 
Well, you told me about Iowa, so you, you can talk about Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, Iowa this week mm-hmm. essentially banned abortion. Yeah. More or less. The governor, Kim Reynolds, signed what is basically known as a heartbeat bill. Yep. Yeah. Which means that if a heartbeat can be heard, if a child heartbeat can be picked up, an abortion is no longer legal. Yeah. Which um, is pretty uh, pretty interesting. A bunch of different states have tried, I guess, to pass that. I don't know what's going to end up happening with this quote-unquote heartbeat bill. Um my views on abortion or choice, whatever terminology you want to use, my my views have. I guess I, I've discussed those really enough on this show. You know, I'm 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 pro life. I don't want to ban abortion. Uh, I was gonna say you and I have discussed it in great detail on this show, but it's been about a year since we last talked about it. Yeah, probably. so. It doesn't hurt to, to to revisit. Yeah, but I I mean I understand I know your I know your positions I know that you are well I'm not I know that you grew up pro choice. Oh yeah, I was, well I mean well it's uh, grow up as in like yeah the, that's me it's okay oh grow up as in that was my um, yeah that's what I, I my beliefs were I was pro choice um, and it was like I said you know. Uh, 20, three years ago, uh, somebody, well, when I joined the libertarian movement and I made a lot of conservative friends, uh, somebody had showed me the, I made a lot of friends that were involved in the pro-life community and they had shown me videos of, um, man, I, I always know her name, but now I can't remember her name. Um, the girl. Gianna who, Jensen. Yes. Uh, her and there's another one that have like survived abortion and that made me change my mind and you know I, I don't expect other people to understand where I'm coming from it's going to take like conversation and education to get an individual to understand where I'm coming from about life you know and, and why I think life is more important and why I really I really honestly don't like the idea of abortion I do consider it Personally, I consider it a killing of a baby, um, and I understand if others don't see it as such, because um, I mean, if you if you don't see it that way, no one's gonna think of it as killing a baby and and be okay with it. You know, like that. That's some people say it's not a baby yet, so that's that's gonna so, be the the the, edu- the talking part. Like, is it a baby or not? Is it alive or not? So blah 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 blah. So okay, as I've said on the show, yeah. Um, which we will once again revisit, is that I was raised to believe that life begins at conception. Yeah. But I know that not everybody believes that. Not everybody was raised to believe that. Yeah, like me. Like you. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. No, no, I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's just because the topic never came up in our household. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so I was raised to believe that life begins at conception. I understand that not everybody was raised that way, so I do see where there's a divide. Yeah. But, as Governor Reynolds said, she said, I I understand not everyone will agree with this decision, but if death is determined when the heart stops beating, then doesn't a beating heart indicate life? Yeah. Makes sense. It does. And that does make sense to me. I hope, I mean... A heartbeat. I think if if the heart if we're gonna go with heartbeats to be the determination of life and us sticking to heartbeat bills uh, or like a heartbeat amendment, um, then perhaps they can work on early warning, like earlier warning of when a woman may be pregnant. You know, so it doesn't get to the heartbeat. Um, fine, you know, get, if you would like to get rid of your fetus before there's a heartbeat, and conservatives and libertarians that are pro-life want to stick to a heartbeat, cool, like, I, I personally don't mind that, um, but, you know, 
don't want to drag on too much on the on the pro life abortion stuff on, on today's show. You know, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be talked about, regardless. You know, the um, I mean, it's the, an, the state of the economy, the 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 not, not adoptions. Only, like, it's just a huge conversation, right? And not, I mean, not, uh, the entire abortion argument is such a long and drawn out argument. Yeah, but. Which means I'm going more into it. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, where is it that the line of what is easy for you and what you believe differs from what science says? Yeah, I know. I see. I, I, I get what you're saying. Right. Yeah. And, you know, one time I did get a few of my more left leaning friends to trip up on something, uh, especially one of my. Feminist friends, thankfully she doesn't listen to the show. I don't even think she'd know this is her, because it's been like a while ago. I asked, you know, if medical advancement gets to the point that with only a fetus, you know, like, and this is more of a DNA genetics thing, you know, if you can, if you can test the genetics and DNA of a fetus, uh, or a baby, or a baby, you know, um, uh, ignore the heartbeat stuff. Like act like abortion is how it is. Um, if you can, if we find what genetic deficiency or I sincerely apologize, I did not mean to call it a de deficiency, a genetic marker or a, a DNA marker uh, that would say that this fetus slash baby will grow up to be homosexual, if a religious family then wants to abort said baby because said baby is going to be gay, is it then okay to abort the baby solely for the reason that the baby is going to be gay? And m my left-leaning friends that were engaging in this conversation with me said, no, that's not right because because he or she will grow up to be gay, which gave an identity then to the baby as a possible life, you know? Or how about, like, a really misogynistic family or father or even misogynistic mother that want to just kill the girls, you know? Like, they'll say the same thing. No, that's not right to, to, to abort said female fetus baby. Um... Which, that's, that's my thing, you know, like, just think about that. When we get to that point, would it then be okay? And I've noticed that a lot of people tend to say, no, that's not okay. Right. Because it has, it has given an identity, you know, that is sort of a protected uh, 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 minority or status, you know, that Democrats or liberals or whatever would care about. And I understand that. Fine, you know, like, yeah, that's your protected people, but... Don't you see now how that life, that fetus or whatever, is going to grow up to be a, 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 a you know, what, whatever. You, you get what I'm trying to say. You know. I, I understand what you're trying to say, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that that is where I notice that most people do get tripped up. Yeah. Is if the, if you know that the child is going, <clears throat> excuse me, if you know that the child is going to have Down syndrome. Yeah. Or something along those lines. Uh, would it be okay for you to abort for the easier life ahead of you? And a lot of people are like, no, you shouldn't do it. Well, no, I've honestly heard yes. I mean, I've heard, I've heard both, but yeah. most people, uh -huh. I would say, would be like, no. Even liberals would say that. Yeah. Well, because I, I, I say that because I've seen a lot of liberals defend what Iceland's doing. I know that's what you're talking about. Oh, I actually wasn't even going there. Oh, well, no, yeah. I, if you didn't know, Iceland has reduced the amount of <laughs> Down yeah. syndrome, babies with Down syndrome born in their country, not through treating <laughs> the Down syndrome, but through encouraging abortion to and, families and, that have. And basically just ending the life of any baby that has, has Down syndrome yeah. before it's born. Which is like, the Down syndrome, you can have a normal life. A normal enough life with Down syndrome okay. with with family support. So I'm just like, what? What's next? Autism? Like, come on. Right, but I mean the 
But if there was a test to be like, okay, yeah, your baby is going to be gay. Yeah. And you know that there would be people. Yeah, Christian family. Yeah. <laughs> Muslim family, you know, whatever. You know there would be people out there that would, that would say, uh-uh. Yeah. That ain't happening. Yeah. And then suddenly it'd be like, no, you have to have that baby. <laughs> and it's just like, there would be a, there would be a whole different fight on your hands. Yeah, exactly. And it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't want to ban it. Um, I really, I, but I do like the heartbeat bill. I'll, I have to be honest. I do like, I do like this heartbeat bill. And I think if that's what we're going to stick with, then perhaps doctors and scientists can work on a way for a more early, um, detection of there being something growing. And, you know, people can also accept more responsibility for what they're doing when it comes to engaging in sex. Right. And even if it comes to the point of a woman rejecting sex from a man, which I believe most feminists, maybe all feminists would agree with me on that, like reject the sex until he uses a condom or else don't give him any poontang. Yes. Like seriously. Either that or make sure that his pullout game is on point. I don't agree with him on that, but... But do you know whose pullout game might be on point? Uh, who's? <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> who told Rand Paul. <laughs> We're getting the hell out of Afghanistan. We're pulling the hell out of Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for that one. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, Donald Trump told Senator Rand Paul, mm -hmm. our close personal friend. Yeah. <laughs> Grand Paul, that we are going to be getting the hell, pulling the hell out of Afghanistan. Uh, and I don't know, like, I know that you, as you said before the show, you were like, he said it to Rand Paul, so obviously that's going to happen. And I'm like, ah, I'm still not going to. I guess. Uh, I'm nah, still not 100 I know what you're saying. I'm not 100% sure if uh, Donald Trump's pullout game is that strong. Uh, <laughs> But if so, that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Because Afghanistan has been going on since one two thousand two two thousand one. I think they deployed right away, like within. Yeah, I th I'm pretty certain that was like yeah. September twelfth. It's a, no, I don't think so. Um, oh, oh, you, oh. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, for me in the eighty second, it was. We were trained to deploy anywhere in the world in 18 hours on notice. Yeah. Anywhere in the world. Um, so that's like, you know, get a get a get a phone call to myself, show up to the unit with my gear, and then it's like, yo, this is happening. Get in our gear, get issued weapons, ammo, whatever the hell we're getting, and then drive onto Green Ramp in Fort Bragg. And then from then on, anywhere in the world within 18 hours from that initial call, I believe special force, special operations overall is probably um, even shorter notice or even about the same notice. So you're probably right, September 12th. Yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, I remember after September 11th, Yeah. I remember bombs dropping September 12th in Afghanistan. Okay. Well, I meant boots on the ground, which still, same thing. Yeah. I, I think Special Forces went in right away. Pretty right. Much. Um, so, and Rangers, probably. So we've been there since 2001. Yeah. We, we can at least agree on 2001. Yeah, definitely. Um, we've been there since 2001, so it's been going on for 17 years. Mm -hmm. 16 and a half. Yep. Making it the longest-running American war. Yeah. And... Because I don't count the Cold War as an actual war. No. No. Uh, making it the longest running military action, mm -hmm. might be a better way to put it, uh, military action that America has been involved in. And it's time for us to get out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. We should have been out of there 10 years ago. Yeah. We should have been out of there when, when well, President Obama said he was going to get us out of there. That's right. why a lot of people voted for him. 100%. Especially a lot of libertarians uh, like me. Well, I wasn't even a libertarian back then. I was just a liberal Democrat, you know, Muslim Arab that doesn't want to see the wars going on anymore. Even though I enlisted when the wars happened because I was looking to, you know, 
a very one over that story. Right. But yeah, you know, like I wish I, be, I wish we didn't have to rely on Trump to do that. I wish Obama had done so already. I wish I sincerely wish Obama had actually earned his Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. Not even trying to be an asshole here. I really do wish I wouldn't have to call him out on it. I wish Obama had just pulled us out. He didn't even pull us out of Iraq, and he did take us into Iraq. We got out of Iraq because of Bush. Bush yeah, he didn't sign the Status of Forces Agreement that caused us to pull out. That was not Obama, and then Obama took us back in. And then took it also, thanks to Clinton, obviously, uh, Syria, Libya, Yemen, uh, you know, wherever the hell else we are, the, uh, Somalia. Um, it's it's so stupid. Yes. Um, but okay, so. And he's been nominated, right? Trump? Like the GOP. Yeah, uh, I think 18 different House members have nominated Trump for the yeah. Nobel Peace Prize. And I, I don't think it takes any. Yeah, that's cool, though. But, yeah, it, it, it's, it doesn't involve our government. Like, nobody has to. It's not a bill or anything. It's no. just 18 members sent a letter to the Nobel the board. Sure. Yeah. Um, and but, even President Moon said that he, he, he said the same thing. Yes, one hundred percent. But Donald Trump, at the bare minimum, yeah, at the bare minimum, has aided in the Korean War coming to an end. At the bare minimum, has aided. On the heavier side of that, he is partially responsible. Who? Trump. Oh, yeah. Uh, he he's he's responsible in some facet, mm -hmm. like to a very small small amount to a great amount. He he is responsible to some facet of the Korean War coming to an end. If he pulls us out of Afghanistan, yeah. If he would have pulled us out of Syria, it would almost be like a guarantee. Yeah. But then he bombed Syria again. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when people are like, yeah, but Bush, but Trump's bombing them. And I'm like, that's what Obama did. Like, honestly, Trump wouldn't be bombing Syria if Obama had went in and done so already. That's my honest opinion on it. Um, Obama. I'm not going to excuse it, though. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, like, that's. Not when you, not when you have Mattis saying we don't actually have evidence that he's using chemical weapons, and then you're going out going, oh yeah, he's using chemical weapons. Yeah, and it's like no, like you need to have the evidence that it's actually happening, and you don't have it. So yeah. let's not let's not jump the gun and start you know dropping sixty missiles on them. Yeah, or whatever it was this time. I don't remember. Yeah, um, we don't need to do that. Yeah. You said a week, like, especially because a week before that, you said, we're, we're going to be leaving Syria, and yeah. then a chemical weapons attack happens? It makes zero sense. Yeah. And, yeah, you can say that Assad's crazy, but nobody's that crazy. Mm -hmm. Nobody's like, oh, wait, America's leaving? Let's keep them here. Yeah, there's a report out of Syria that it was actually one of the other sides that had done so. Right. Um, and even, oh, and uh, the whole, um, what's his name, the black athlete that's the unofficial ambassador? Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman, I guess he says he had gifted uh, Kim Jong. Uh, oh, the, the art, art of the deal. The art of the deal. Yeah, and he said that really warmed him to Trump. Yeah, <laughs> which I think is pretty cool, man, like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Dennis Rodman. Like, people shouldn't be mad at if Trump pulls this off, people really shouldn't be mad on either side. No, absolutely some people, not. Because some people, the neocons, want this stuff to continue, too. So it's not just like that liberal people are not as excited or warm to the idea of Trump being attributed to this stuff. But, you know, even neocons want this stuff to continue. Right. And, God, right now we live in the weirdest timeline ever. Yeah. I mean, it's the greatest timeline. Yeah. You've got Kanye and Trump mm -hmm. hanging out. You've got Dennis Rodman out over there with Kim Jong-un. You've got Pamela Anderson hanging out with Julian Assange. Uh-huh. Pamela Anderson, I think, may have dated Putin, actually. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's a bizarre time to be alive right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, and, you know, speaking of uh, uh, Kim Jong and, uh, you know, his communist uh, party, guys, we have, we have finally, we've, we've, we've segued every single topic now. We still have one more. Well, yeah, I'm segueing into it right now. We have one more after. Which one? The one you want to talk. Anyway, May Day. Oh, May Day was this week. Yeah, yeah, May the first, known as May Day, it's the International uh, Workers Day. It's like the international. It's basically International Labor Day. It's International Communism Day. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. To be fair, it's International Workers Day, which is Labor Day around the world. With very Marxist, socialist uh, inspirations is really what it is. May the 1st, May, or May Day. And you had told me that there was a May Day parade in Tampa, I guess. There was. I wish I would have known because we should have went out there. But, uh, yeah, you know, so a lot of commies and socialists get really excited on May Day. And, you know, they talk about how awesome socialism is, uh, how awesome communism is. You know, the, the plight of the worker, and, you know, it's like, calm down. Your, your ideology sucks. <laughs> yeah, and I, 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 I spend the whole day, every few hours I'd make a May Day post. <laughs> yep. And, like, I didn't even get to, like, everything I wanted to. Um, I remember, like, my first post, I was just like, happy May Day, and I posted, like, this thing that was like, Communist apologists feel like at least there's not a racial component to this, which actually there was a lot of racial stuff when it comes to, when it came to like the way communists treated uh, people, like, like uh, Stalin p- uh, killing mainly Russian people. He's not Russian, right? Yeah, you know, like um, uh, and, and them focusing a lot on like Central Asian Muslims, um, but you can see it like around the different communist parties or. So communism was has never been achieved. It's always been like the goal. We all know that. If you don't know, communism has never been a thing. And I get that it has never been a thing. Real communism has never been tried. I no, I agree. You I, know when I, they say that, um, and we use it as a joke. But like people don't understand the difference between socialism and communism. So like these communist parties were political parties, but they were socialist. So they're all socialist revolutions, and the, the aim is to go to communism, and they never did, they, just because of the nature of man, you know, that they never did. You know, the whole idea is you get socialism, the people, the, 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 the revolutionary guards, you know, protect the revolution and the workers, and then they never leave power. You know, like, that's what, that's what happened every single time, everywhere. Uh, there, there comes a socialist revolution. The vanguards can, you know, protect their revolution and keep, you know, and, and make sure the the, the revolutionary uh, culture remains. And then they just never leave, especially when the next wave of people that weren't in the revolution take power. You know, like the hell did? Why would they give up their power? And that's just what keeps on happening. Right, and, and then the people who had absolutely nothing to do with the revolution, like when the next yeah wave comes, yeah. And the people who had nothing to do with the revolution are like, well, this isn't what I want, and they try to leave, they can't. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, you know, and I even, I even my, in my next post, I was talking about the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, and Molotov was the foreign uh, minister or whatever. Made a great cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> great uh, cocktail. In the Soviet Union, um, and... Ribbentrop was the uh, uh, foreign ministry chief in uh, uh, Nazi Germany, and they made they had a it wasn't an alliance outright, but it was a non-aggression pact, and it, it was a secret pact. No, well, not anymore. At the time, it was a secret pact that that the National Socialist German Workers Party, you know. The, Socialists, um, Nazis, you know, they they, they, <laughs> shook, like the Nazis. they shook hands with the with the with the socialists of the Communist Party in the Soviet Union, 
um, saying like, hey, we're not going to attack each other and we're not going to freak out and we will... They partitioned uh, Poland. Uh, Germany got most of Poland because that used to be part of the German Empire back in the day. Um, uh, and uh, and I've talked about the history of World War One enough. Hopefully that whoever is listening remembers some of the stuff I've said uh, about it. And... Um, when World War II started in Europe uh, in '39, um, they they both invaded at the same time. Russia ran uh, down the those uh, Baltic states of Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and they got their share of Poland, and so did the the Nazis. And something I didn't know is one of my friends posted a picture on that thread of. Um, Members of the, like, SS, I think, or the German military that, like, would shake hands and, and you know, we were, were friendly with each other in Poland uh, when both of them were still in, the, in that non-aggression status, the Soviet Union and Germany. Um, so there was a lot more togetherness in this thing. You know, people act like, like the uh, oh the Soviets were good people or whatever like dude they they invaded them what are you talking about and people don't remember that and the 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 school system never teaches it from what I've seen because I've never ever get taught got taught or told that Russia or the Soviet Union invaded all those those, those countries those Baltic countries and um, Poland when the Nazis did never knew that. But that's what happened. I was like, what? That's crazy. Yep. You know? And actually, I jumped the gun by... But, well, actually, no, I didn't really jump the gun. So, like, that's when they did that. Around the same time, the Soviet Union, under, like, Lenin and Trotsky was still there for another year. He still had, like, a year ahead of him before the, the thing Stalin kicked him out to Mexico. Uh, they made a, a, a man-made famine because they started going around and seizing lands from like affluent farmers in Russia called the Kulaks. Uh, and these, these Ukrainians and Russian farmers, they started booting them, taking their, their grain, taking their lands, and they sent them out to Siberia. And uh, the numbers, are, it's hard to tell, I guess. Every time I look up deaths, uh, when it comes to like a famine, it's hard to tell, whatever. But the most conservative numbers are 3 million people died. Most people say it's 7 million, and some say up to 10 million died in, the, in that two-year period from 31 to 33 when that famine happened. Um, and same thing, when they went into Poland then, when World War II started, uh, they started sending uh, anybody that you know was a threat to the communists they started sending them out to Siberia too, to all these Polish people. Right. You know, people, I don't know how people like ignore that. You know, like, I love my friend Zach. I love that guy, you know, but he's, he's. For those of you who don't know, he's referring to Zach Comic Chorus. Yeah, Zach Comic Chorus. And, like, I love the kid, man, but honestly, I don't understand how communists in general think it's okay to display the hammer and sickle that has been worn by these communist parties and, and countries around the world that have killed mi millions of people in the way they did. I don't understand how that's okay in the Nazis, like wearing a swastika is in. Like, to me, it's so confusing when I see Nazis and when I see, like, National Socialists in the streets with, like, you know swastikas going up against Antifa with hammer and sickles. I'm just like, yep, run them both over. <laughs> right, right. <dude. laughs> you know? This is why we don't need magazine capacity. Yeah. <laughs> and then in China, Mao had this uh, great leap forward where he did the same thing, you know, like, start taking control of people's lives, what they're going to do, whatever. 40 million died because of their famine, because of what they were doing. 40 million, some say up to 60 million Chinese died. This was in the 60s. One of the things they did in China, you will not believe this, um, I forget what it was called. It was like four pests that they wanted to kill. 
they, so the Chinese, they would, the students and the people at the urge of the Communist Party, they wanted to kill these birds. They went out and, and they'd, make, they'd make noise every night so that these birds couldn't sleep. Um, because it was a pest that they, I don't remember why, it's a bird that is considered a pest. Uh, they wanted to kill pests, locusts, and two other things that I can remember. But when they killed enough birds, <laughs> the birds couldn't eat a lot of the insects that are pests that made the famine even worse. Right. But yeah, the communists like went out and killed birds. It's fucked up, man. By keeping them awake? They kept them awake. That's the, birds, the, the birds died from, from exhaustion. That was what I feel my neighbors were doing to me yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, but uh, I just want to list a few more things for people to look up since we're at the end of the show now. Yeah, yeah. I doubt we're going to get to that, which is fine. Um, uh, you know, look up, uh, look up uh, Ho Chi Minh. You know, that's Vietnam. Uh, look, Follow the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Yep. Follow look up Ho Chi Minh Trail. Uh, Cambodia. Uh, it was known as Khmer, K-H-M-E-R, um, or, or Khmer Rogue, uh, very Marxist, uh, killed a quarter of his country's population, uh, which was ten or nine million. They killed about two and a half to three. Um, and uh, even people don't realize this. Like Somalia became a socialist country in the seventies, and then fell to what you see today. Yes, this is the, the Somalia is the is a dead socialist country. Um, Mugabe from Zimbabwe, socialist, very Marxist guy. Uh, a lot of those countries in Africa are. Uh, and what you see today in Venezuela, before you saw the effects of central planning and government control of an economy that they can't predict, everybody from Bernie Sanders to the Young Turks to all these other so, uh, socialists and democratic socialists and progressives were cheering on um, Chavez, you know, uh, in the late 90s. Um, and now look at now look at Venezuela. That it, then Venezuela is a dying socialist country. Look at Cuba. You, you have middle class families hunting dogs. Yeah, like, man. Yeah. It's so sad. I think toilet paper is like 20, or the equivalent of 26 bucks a roll. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, Ask yourself why, and try to try to see what price ceilings, price floors, inflation. This is all stuff that the government does, not capitalism. Look all that stuff up that the government does, and see why socialism has been and always will be failing. And for the love of God, stop confusing welfare with socialism. Welfare is one thing; socialism is another thing. And welfare exists in both societies. Um, even the Prime Minister of Denmark, when he heard that Bernie Sanders had called Den Denmark a socialist country, he said, no, we are a capitalist country, which is very true. And I've talked about this before. Anyways, be more, you know, study up on, on socialism and, and its effects in Africa uh, and around the world. And you'll see this is not a cool thing. I had, I had a buddy. Even though I have socialist friends. I love you guys. And I'm, it's okay we disagree, but I hate your ideology and I hate Marx. I had a friend years ago who, uh, when the health care bill passed, when Obamacare passed, he was, he was like, he was like, yeah, all the Republicans bitching about how this is socialism. Well, do you know how much of our country is socialism? And I looked at him like, he's an idiot. And he, the post office, I said, no, it's that's not socialism. That's not socialism. He goes, yes, it is. And I was like, no, because you pay to use it by buying stamps. The less stamps you buy, the less you pay to use it. Like, and I know about the taxes and all that kind of stuff. I also have a... No, this is not against you, but I'm, you know, the right. economics guy. I just want to say real quick, uh, for the sake of the listeners, too, a, a better way to explain that the post office is not socialism is because uh, private enterprise exists uh, that does the same thing. Right, that and that was where I was going to get to yeah. after that, where and then I said, and if I want something delivered, I'm not going to the post office, I'm going to UPS. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So socialism, if you want to call social, post, the post office socialism, 
you would have to get rid of, you, you would have to make it illegal for a private company to provide any of the services that the post office does with, which at the moment is not a thing. You can, you have more options than even uh, FedEx and UPS and DHL. DHL, there, yeah, there's all kinds of people that can do that, private careers, you know. Um, I'm certain Amazon's working on something. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Amazon just wants to do everything. Yeah. A Amazon wants to do everything that Google isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the end of our show. All right. Excellent. Good segue. <laughs> we segued the shit out of yes, the show. I <laughs> um, also have no idea what you did with that control right there, but whatever you did is really nice, because it took away a lot of that background static. Oh, I just turned down the headphones. Is that what that is? Yeah. Is it, I, I couldn't tell the difference, but okay, cool. Yeah, I just turned down the headphones, so that way... Well, what would that affect the recording? It didn't. Oh, okay. Okay. It, it just... I turned down the headphones, because it was like, both of us were just screaming in my ear, and I was like, man, what is... Uh, okay. I'm yeah. going to turn that down a little bit. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please address them in the comments. Did we mention them last week? Oh, yeah. Also, uh, for anybody who was looking for us on SoundCloud last week, my deepest and most sincere apologies. I'm an idiot. Uh, and my PC made me very mad. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, uh, I, I apologize, that episode is just gone. You can find the live video on Facebook, but the first 10 minutes of sound is missing there, and that, once again, is because I'm an idiot. Yeah. And I'm not a producer, but I am pretending. So, uh, if you want to hear that episode, go to Facebook, check us out live. Check us out on the uh, live video that we put up. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still up. Uh, just the first five minutes or so is silent. So just get through that. Uh, so yeah, again, very sorry about that. I do apologize. Um, remember, do you have anything? No, before I do. Okay. Uh, remember, you can find this in almost every other episode at muddywatersoffreedom.com. You can follow us on Facebook at muddy. Facebook.com backslash Muddy Waters of Freedom. You can follow us on Instagram at Muddy Waters of Freedom or on the Twitter at Muddied underscore Waters. Uh, we are also on MeWe and Minds, so you can follow us there. Uh, and yeah, I think that pretty much hits our social media. So, yeah, nothing else from you. Yeah, nothing for me. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. And remember, where we're going, we don't need roads. I don't know when Sean Whitehead joined. Huh? I don't know when Sean Whitehead joined. Oh, would you mind if I head out, man? I gotta see the bomb and dead real quick. Wait till the song's over. No, that's fine. After that, though. After the song. That's what I meant. Ryan Miller wants to know if you're gonna jump. If I'm gonna what? Jump. Jump. <laughs>
Oh, he's just gonna get you that. Okay. I've been I've been supposed to jump for five years now. <laughs> Spring Lake is that a city near here? Oh, uh, is he one of those guys? There's a unit. It's, it's not a unit. Um, there's a group of veterans that uh, jumps one, once a month or so. Um, Oh, is that Spring? Do they do jumps out there? Well, a lot of jumps. Spring Lake? Mm hmm. Parachuting? Oh. Uh, they do parachute style jumps, um, $50. It, but it's veterans, um, which I think is really fucking cool. And I do want to, I'm going to have to talk to them about that later. Danielle Butcher is going to come on our show. When? I don't know. I'm trying to work it out with her. That's awesome. Man, we have more viewers now than we have the rest of the show. Super static. Yeah, it's a little static, but we won't know until it's done. Is that true? Yeah, it's a little static, but we won't know until it's done. It's not that bad, right? How did they hear us? I don't know. We'll all find out when the video is over. Sorry, what would have changed here? Is that what does this do? Min map main ma main mix. Let's go ahead and end it.